Welcome to my third and final WWDC 2011 video. If you saw my other videos on Mac OS X Lion and iOS 5, you know that this video is probably going to be pretty long, I'd say to about 20 minutes to a half an hour. And so um, hopefully that guys that doesn't scare you guys away from uh, watching this video. Really I just kind of like to go in depth, you know, give you guys the full picture of what all this stuff really is. I don't just like to say, yeah, this is what I said, and that's it. You know, I kind of like to give a full in-depth coverage of this stuff and tell you guys what I personally think about it. So um, I do guarantee, though, that if the, if the length of this video does scare you, I would just pause it now, go to your kitchen, you know, get some popcorn or some crackers or something, crack open a Mountain Dew or a Pepsi or something. It'll make this video a lot more enjoyable for you. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is going to be all about iCloud. That was the whole last part of the keynote was about iCloud. So what is iCloud? Well, I'm going to break it down for you sort of like Steve Jobs did. So for the past couple years, you know, the PCs have been really popular. Macs and PCs, you know, it's like the main digital hub. Every video camera you buy, every phone you buy, every device you buy plugs into your computer. You know, you really have to plug in your computer to get the full use out of it. And so while that still remains true, um, it, that's not the best way to keep everything in sync because as Steve Jobs said, you know, say you have an iPod and an iPad. So say one day you run your iPod Touch and you see a great song in the iTunes store. So you download that, and that song. And so then later in the day, you're on your iPad, you're outside with your iPad, and you see some pretty cool, you know, scenery. You take some pictures on your iPad. So now, but it comes time for the end of the day, you want to charge your devices, you plug your iPod Touch in your computer. That song syncs to your Mac, but now it's not on your iPad. So then you plug your iPad in to sync that song, but now those photos you took on your iPad are on your Mac, but not your iPod Touch. And so now keeping all these devices in sync can just, it can drive you crazy. If you have all these devices, to keep everything in sync nowadays is a nightmare. So what Steve Jobs you know, really said is that what they're doing is they're taking the PC and the Mac right here. Here's all the other devices down here like iPod Touch, you know, all the little, little devices like iPo or iPhones and iPads. And they're taking the Mac or, or the PC and they're taking it down here with all the same level. It's kind of like demoting it, I would say, as just another device. So now what's going to keep everything in sync? You know, if, you can't, if you can't really plug it into your computer and have it sync everything very easily, then what's going to take its place? and that is where the iCloud comes in. So basically what this iCloud is going to do is that it's going to keep all these devices in sync so that if I want my iPod Touch and I download a song from the app or I download a song from the iTunes store or an app from the um, app store what it does is it pushes that the the fact that I've downloaded that up to the cloud and then any other devices that have my Apple ID on them they automatically download it instantly so that if I buy a song or an application or I take a picture on this device, immediately it's synced and over the internet it appears on all my other devices and I don't even have to think about it. And it literally takes seconds. You know, I could have my two devices here, I could take a picture on here, I could by the time I get this turned on, go to the lock screen, go to my photos app, it's there. So it this just keeps everything in sync. It works insanely well judging by the demonstration. So now we'll go ahead and we'll go a little more in depth with this. So before iCloud, Apple had a service called MobileMe. And that was basically for your mail, your contacts, and your calendar. And those would all be in sync, just like the same way. You know, it would sync across all your devices without you even thinking about it. However, it did cost you $100 a year, which is pretty pricey for what it was. You know, Apple, uh, they came on stage yesterday and Steve Jobs said, you know, that wasn't their finest chapter. You know, they, do, they did admit that that wasn't a great idea because, you know, not a lot of people were willing to fork over $100 a year just to keep their stuff in sync, you know, those three basic things in sync. So now just instead of those three applications, iCloud now contains nine total. And so I'm going to go ahead and read them off my huge list of notes here, which in these, um, in order by the keynote, are Contacts, Calendar or iCal, Mail, App Store, the iBook Store, uh, the Backup System, Documents, Photo Stream, and iTunes. So now I'm going to go in depth with these, each of these one by one. So now uh, let's go ahead and we'll get started. So contacts, mail, and calendar really work the same way they did in mobile me. You know, everything stays in sync. If I, I'm just going to use a, this example a lot. Say I have a MacBook here and an iPad here. And so I'm on the go with my iPad and my MacBook is at home. You know, I could say on my, I can go into calendar and say, you know, meeting with John at 6.30. And as soon as I save that, that uh, syncs up to the cloud. And that now appears on my calendar on my computer as well, seconds later. So everything's automatically in sync. Or let's say I'm on my iPhone and I get a call from a number I've never heard of. 
hey, it's John from high school. Okay, cool, yeah, I'd like to go offer a coffee sometime. So you can add his contact information to your iPhone, and as soon as you save it, that syncs to your other devices too instantly. You know, you don't even have to think about it. It just does it for you. So those three applications work the way you think. I really won't go in depth with all three of those because they all work the exact same way. Now, App Store is where it gets kind of cool. App Store, like I, I kind of used this demonstration at the beginning of this video, but if I if I have you know a um, iPod Touch, an iPhone, and an iPad, and I'm on my iPhone and I have seen an application that's really cool, you know I can um, purchase that application and automatically it starts downloading like at the same time onto my other two devices, so that I have that application on every device. Now I don't have to say, oh I can't take my iPad because it doesn't have that app on, and I don't have time to plug into my computer and sync it. I'm late. So it's automatically there. You don't even have to worry about it. It's just automatically sunk. I guess I guess that's the word sunk, past tense of sync. iBooks works pretty much the same way as the App Store does. If you buy a book, then it just syncs to all your other devices immediately. Uh, so you, you, if you're on your iPhone and the screen's too small, you can say, oh, I'd like, um, as long as I'm thinking about it, I'll buy that book. So by the time you get home, you can read it on your iPad or your MacBook. Backup is very cool. It's sort of like a time machine sort of feature. What it does is it takes all your stuff, um, you know, you can back up with iTunes, so if something happens to your iPod, you can just restore it from that backup, and then you have all your music and all your pictures right back where you left them. The same thing does this, but instead of backing up to your local computer, like just on iTunes, in your application, it backs up to the cloud as well. And it automatically does this once a day at night. So when you're sleeping, you can wake up and, you're like, and your iPod has already been backed up wirelessly. It doesn't have to be plugged into your computer. It just automatically backs up to the cloud. And this is Wi-Fi only, so it will only work, like, but at night, you know, most people have Wi-Fi networks anyway, and if you're sleeping, you're probably at your house, and so you'll be on Wi-Fi anyway. And with this backup, even your device settings are stored. So it's not just, you know, um, if I have, it, like, it, it'll save my exact, like, how bright my screen was, how loud my volume was, if I had Wi-Fi enabled or 3G disabled or something. It remembers every single setting of that phone, so it's like... If I restore from that backup, it's like I never had to restore it all. All my contacts and everything is exactly the way I left it. Moving on to iTunes in the cloud. iTunes in the cloud works very much like the App Store and kind of like I, uh, I used a demonstration at the beginning of this video. As soon as I buy a song on these, on my, um, say my iPhone, on my iPad and my iPod Touch or my Mac, they just start downloading instantly. So everything's already in sync. I don't have to plug my iPhone into my computer and then plug my my iPad in my computer too just to have it sync so, so I just buy a song and it instantly starts syncing to all my other devices and along to downloading to all these other devices there's no extra charge so let's say um, I don't have um, this auto sync enabled on one of my devices you can disable it so if you don't want it syncing across all your devices you know you want to download an, uh, like an iPod app that's just for an iPod you don't want to have an iPod app on your iPad then all you have to do is turn it off and it won't sync across all your devices so let's say for example you did that but in the, it came to your mind later that you know I do want this on my iPad so on your iPad you can go into the, say the App Store or in this case the iTunes Music Store and you can browse a list of purchased music you know and it's not just purchased on that device it's that you've ever purchased on that Apple ID so it keeps track of everything that you've ever purchased and if you want to download it to that device you just simply tap on it and there's no extra charge because you've already bought the song you just want it on this device so from the cloud it just automatically downloads that song right to your iPad ready to play no syncing required at all the next one is photo stream and Steve Jobs said that personally it's probably his favorite and this works pretty much like all the others a lot of these things are repetitive but you know they're, they're meant for like that application so they might work a little differently however uh, with photo stream it's kind of like what you think it is. You know, if, if, I have, if I see some cool scenery and I have my iPhone, I can take those pictures. Or you know, if you have kids and you want to take a picture of your kids and on the go, say they're in the car, and it's a great photo opportunity. You can take a picture, and by the time you get home, everything's already synced right up onto your Mac, onto your iPad, onto all your devices, so you can view those pictures anywhere. And the main thing they really said here was that you know this isn't like a whole new application to learn. So for example, on iPhoto on the Mac. It's not, it, all they do is add like an album that's called PhotoStream and then it just takes all the photos that have been downloaded from the cloud and puts them there instead of into albums. And so basically what this is going to do is that it's going to keep those photos for 30 days on the cloud. But you have 30 days from the time you took the picture to move them. So if you want to keep it, if you just want to take a temporary picture just to share on Twitter or something, there's really no need to really save that to your drive. So you can just keep it in the cloud and after 30 days it's just deleted. But if, if you take a picture and it's in the cloud and you really want it, it's like a nice picture of maybe you and your girlfriend or your wife or your kids, then you could just simply move it to an album. And this doesn't have to be done on the computer. This can be done on your iPad or your iPhone or pretty much any device. So you can take a picture 
on one device, have it on all the others, and then from there you can move it to all these separate places. So it's just like sort of like a wireless way to keep all your photos in sync, and so you can choose to have you know have them deleted after 30 days, or you could just um, you can move them to your device too before Apple deletes them. And since photos can take up a lot of space, especially with all these like really nice um, cameras now, really nice like high megapixel counts and everything, they take up a lot of space, a couple megabytes a piece most likely. So on devices, since you know a lot of these iPhones are only you know 16 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes, that's really not a lot of space when you're talking about having everything on there, like all your music, all your movies, you know, all that other stuff. So what they're going to do is in, instead of pushing, like, a, if you're really heavy on that camera, you know, you're not going to take up all your space with these pictures when you don't want to. They're all, Apple's only going to store the last thousand pictures. So after that, you know, the ones will start, they'll start falling off the end. So the older pictures will uh, start to get deleted to make room for the new ones. But that's only on these devices. They won't be deleted from the cloud. You know, you can have as many pictures as you can take in 30 days in the cloud, and that does not matter. So this sort of leads me up to documents. You know, documents is sort of like a um, Dropbox sort of deal, where you can take a, you have a Dropbox account, and you could, it's kind of like a hard disk in the sky, as Steve Jobs put it, you know. So you drag stuff up to the hard disk, you can do a full restore. And since it's stored up in the cloud, you know, you can just drag it back down to your computer through the internet, and it's, it's like you never lost it. So it's sort of like a big 5 gig flash drive that Apple has waiting for you. So you can copy whatever you want, and as long as it's under 5 gigabytes, you can store it in the cloud. So say I have, you know, like a video I just downloaded or something. You know, but I want to do a full restore, but I don't have this, the backup space to do that. I can just copy it up to the cloud, I can restore my computer, and I can just drag it back to my machine, no problems. And you, know, you might be saying, you know, 5 gigabytes, well, if I'm going to be taking a lot of pictures, photo stream is going to be automatically syncing all my music, or photo stream is going to be automatically syncing all my pictures. I'm going to have, you know, music syncing between all these devices. So that 5 gigabytes is going to go quick. Not necessarily, because of all those photos and photo stream and all that music being synced over your devices with um, iTunes in the cloud, none of that counts towards your 5 gigabytes. This is strictly just for documents. So say you have iWork, um, say, we'll say pages, sort of like a Word uh, document, like a Word application. So you can have pages on your Mac and pages on your iPad. You can store that pages document in the cloud, or that numbers document, or like, the, like a spreadsheet. You can store that all in the cloud, and that's what starts to count towards your 5 gigabytes. But let's be honest here, how big is a text document? Not very big. And so that 5 gigabytes, you can really have a lot of stuff. So that's pretty much it for iCloud. The biggest thing that they really brought up was that you know, there's nothing new to learn. This, like, this whole like, photo stream and iTunes in the cloud, they're not separate applications. They're just integrated with the current applications. And you, have, you don't have to learn anything new to use them. You know, it just syncs for you all in the background completely automatically so you don't have to do anything and all your devices stay in sync. And now the big, like the mysterious one more thing at the end of the keynote wasn't as big this year, you know, I was hoping it'd be like an iPhone 5, but they did announce, announce a new service called iTunes Match. And basically what this is going to do is that, you know, if you have CDs that you ripped to your computer, you didn't buy those from iTunes, so you might not, you know, have album art, they might not be the highest of quality. So if you have a lot of songs like that, or maybe they, won't, they don't have like the full name of the song in there or something, uh, since Apple has, I think they said 15 million songs, maybe 18 million songs or something like that in the keynote, it's, gar it's not guaranteed, but it's pretty likely they're going to have that CD that you ripped in their store. So what iTunes Match is going to do is that it's going to scan. Like It doesn't upload your library. They made sure to mention that because I have about 4,000 songs in my library. And to upload 4,000 songs to a server, like, like I said in the keynote, that would take weeks. So it, that'd be crazy. So what this does is that it just comes down to your machine and scans your songs, and so then it can match all those things up. You know, um, the album art, the name, the artist, everything like that. And not only that, they're gonna upgrade the bit rate of that song, so it's gonna sound even better, and it's gonna be DRM free. Like you can play it on whatever device you want, and all this is gonna be for twenty four ninety nine for the whole entire year. You know, it's not a monthly thing. It's twenty five dollars for the entire year. So then they, they did say in the keynote that not everyone is going to need this. You know, I buy, like, all my music, you know, and it has everything. You know, it has all the album art. It has good sound and quality. It has all the artists and everything filled in already. So I won't need this. You know, why spend $25 a year for something I don't need at all? But for those people that have, you know, a lot, they don't really buy anything. Uh, they just rip everything themselves. They might have a lot of missing information for their music. This is for you people. So 25 bucks a year is, you know, as they said, an industry-leading offer. I think they said Google would charge around $200 to do like 20,000 songs, and you know, iTunes would be $25. You know, and not and Google, 
doesn't upgrade your music or anything like that whereas this upgrades your music 256k AAC DRM free so it, you do get better sounding music out of it as well as you know having all that information filled in for you and all the other places that like Google I think they also compare to Amazon you have to upload your library to them which like, like I said takes weeks this comes down to your computer and scans your library so there's no need to do that so that wasn't the one more thing I was expecting but it is still a cool feature however I just won't be using it and so that's pretty much it for the whole entire WWDC keynote. Um, uh, after that, he really just looked, uh, took us at a closer look at the data centers for the whole iCloud. I mean, there's, they have like three data centers, and it's just, you know, hard drive upon hard drive and all these different kinds of servers. It's just like a building full of servers and hard drives. It's crazy. All the storage you're going to need for all those millions of iPhone users constantly pushing data. And I mean constantly pushing gigabytes of data across the skies. You know, it's just crazy, but they showed us, you know, how serious they really are about this. So that's it for WWDC 2011. I hope I covered it good enough for you guys. I know there's probably going to be some things I missed out on, but hopefully not. And I hope I didn't bore you guys too much. Um, you're probably done with your popcorn or your, you know, whatever drink you got. So that's pretty much all I can really say about WWDC. Overall, it was a great keynote. A lot of cool things happening at Apple right now. Definitely my most anticipated feature of this whole keynote is going to be Lion. comes out in just a month. I cannot wait. I hope to get an iPhone later this year. So um, this is definitely a great keynote. It's going to go back in the books. It's great to see Steve Jobs there. And that's basically it. So I'm at CPU Kid on Twitter. Also check out iTechCity.org and at iTechCity. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, but before I ramble anymore because this video series is already insanely long, thanks for watching.